I was writing music before I think I had the sort of fluency in musicianship and, and the confidence in musicianship that now I feel I do have. And in a way, I think I felt almost like a little bit of a spy, a spy in the house of music. Over time, I do feel as though the music I'm writing is ever more my music. And indeed, one can have I mean, I, I tell my students that one of the things you have to do is to create forms of creative self-delusion when you write. I mean, if you think too much about the weight of history, or if you think too much about of the weight of the field, which is even worse, especially if you're young, I think. You know, like, the, yes, there are several other se tens of thousands of rest of, just like you out there, you know, go to it, you know, good luck. You know, I, I, I mean, I, you have to find ways of not being paralyzed by that, and, and I think one of them is that if you have an idea for a piece and you believe in it, then at a certain point that piece becomes the only piece of music that's ever been written. And I, I honestly, I can feel that when I'm writing. It's just, just I mean, I'm, I'm putting it together. I mean, you know, th thank God I'm inventing music, you know. <laughs> and, and of course it's delusion. Of course I know it's not true. But you can feel it in a certain deep way. And I will say that over time, I've felt like I've been making more and more discoveries for myself, and that sense of personal engagement and invention keeps it fresh for me, and I don't feel like I'm recycling. I'm not talking about having found some sort of absolutely essential core. Actually, what I feel like is that more and more, there is a practice I have that I'm engaged in, and it's not so much me, it's this practice I've discovered, and that I can, can return to and find some satisfaction. listen to a lot of music. You know, there are some composers, and, and I fully understand this and, and empathize, or sympathize with it at least, that, you know, too much music, it's like too much information, you, you just don't want to be overwhelmed by other people's music, as Virgil Thompson called it. Um, I understand that. Uh, and yet at the same time, um, I just get so much pleasure from listening to lots and lots of different things all the time. Um, and, uh, and it gets me thinking. I think it keeps, it keeps me um, challenging. It gives me ideas. It, it keeps challenging assumptions. Um, I, you know, uh, one of the uh, things, of, you know, the composer who is essentially my kind of granddad or great-granddad aesthetically is Charles Ives. I mean, that's, um, it's just kind of obvious. Uh, one of the things that above all I love about Ives is that there's no composer I know who went further in finding essentially seemingly irreconcilable things that he reconciled or he made them live together. He found a way, you know, for things to get along together that shouldn't. Um, and I find that a really noble and wonderful thing and in a way it's kind of democratic and idealistic American. Um, it, it, I think it's, it's really an aspect of the better aspect, of better qualities of this culture. Over time, and it comes, it, it comes partly from spectralism, it, becomes, it comes just as much from composers like you know, Henry Cowell and Ives, that there is 
Uh, there are ways of looking at acoustical phenomenon of sound and using that as a model to create sounds on different scales. I don't mean scales like modes, I mean different scales of size, hierarchies. And that, uh, and that what you can get from it actually is precisely that beauty. It is also by space. You get, you get the proper amount of space between the notes, both horizontally and vertically. And that's what I, um, I think that's why this practice that I pursue feels satisfying to me and doesn't feel like it's over-intellectualizing. It doesn't feel like it's um, forcing us into too uh, cerebral a trap. As a matter of fact, it's, it's just the opposite. It feels like it kind of frees me up. The, 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 the analogy that I use is basically a jazz one, that I, um, that, that I teach myself my own changes so that then I can improvise on the page as I'm writing. And that's, that's really what I feel like I'm doing with this. So um, uh, in, in that sense, if, if you find it beautiful, great. I mean, but it, I think it's actually a byproduct of the approach rather than being something that's done despite it. Um, it's not so much like I, I feel like, oh, um, I better be rigorous in some way so that, you know, people won't like laugh at me. I can show them that I'm rigorous. You know, it's, it's more like, no, this is what allowed me to sort of dig deep enough to get to what I was looking for.